Hello, my name is John Bernard. I'm the superintendent of the North Reading Public Schools, and I'd like to welcome you to this episode of Inside NRPS. My guest today is Mr. Mike Rosa, who is the coordinator of school counseling services for the North Reading Public Schools. Mike, welcome. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. So, Mike, I think um, you've had a long career in North Reading. Mm -hmm. um, you've certainly done a nice job both as a guidance counselor and, and now in a newer role as a coordinator of school counseling services working across the district in elementary school, middle school, and high school. Mm -hmm. What I typically do with a guest of the show is I ask you to tell us a little bit about yourself for the community and also mm -hmm. um, a little bit kind of a general overview of your work, and then we'll get into some questions that we think might be helpful for the public to have a better understanding of what you're doing for our students. Great. So, the, the, the show is thank yours. Thank you. All minutes. right. Well, thank you very much. Um, so, I'm in my 15th year at um, North Reading, and it's been very rewarding. I've really enjoyed my time. Like you mentioned, I started as a, um, a guidance counselor and mm -hmm. have um, transitioned into this newer role. Um, I started my school counseling career about three years before I came to North Reading. Um, did some of my internship hours at Burlington High School and then worked for a few years out at Neshoba Regional High School mm -hmm. in um, Bolton. So um, I've always really enjoyed the work and um, definitely feel like I found the right sort of niche for me in, in my career. Um, it's been really interesting to see how sort of school counseling has evolved just in my time mm -hmm. in the field. Um, certainly, as we meant, you mentioned, my, my role evolved um, while I'm housed at the high school and a fair amount of my attention is there. It's been really exciting over the last couple of years to go into the different uh, elementary schools in the district and the, um, you know, the, the middle school and see the different really neat things that the school counselors are doing mm. at those levels. Sure, too. sure. Yeah, you mentioned you've been here 15 years. Mm -hmm. I've worked in North Reading 60. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we, we started almost at the same time. Yeah. I, I remember hiring you at that time, and you, you, you've spoken a little bit <clears throat> about the evolution of the, of the work and, mm -hmm. and, your, and your role in that work. And I think for, for, the, for the benefit of those watching, I think it's, it's, it's interesting to note that um, back in 2003, when I started as the principal of the high school, there were two guidance counselors mm -hmm. at, our, at our high school, yep. and um, there was one full-time school psychologist yep. and that made up the the staff of that department at that time mm -hmm. um, while it's true that the the population of the high school has grown quite a bit right. since that time yeah. um, I, I, I'm guessing that at the time I think we were somewhere right around 600 students and we're now at about 745 yeah. at just our high school yep. um, but the department has grown yeah. And I think it's grown out of a need. And, you know, you talked about about your work and, and, and seeing what's going on in other schools in our district. Um, but at the high school, where we've grown to a department now of four guidance counselors, mm -hmm. a full-time school psychologist, mm -hmm. and two adjustment counselors, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So we, we, or excuse me, two school psychologists and one adjustment yeah. counselor. We've seen um, a need arise, and I think... In my opinion, I'm going to ask you to talk a little bit more about sure. it. Um, not only have I seen issues arise in the, in my career that that needed needed more attention for students and families, but I think also you've introduced a lot of new things mm -hmm. that um, are, are are I think very interesting. The Naviance program, yeah. for example, mm -hmm. and, and I'm hoping you can talk a little bit more about what that is. But but the the, the needs were there, I think, for expanding programs and benefiting students and families. And I, yeah. I'd like you, if you could, just talk sure. a little bit about maybe two or three things that you would consider to be kind of kind of hallmarks of yeah. your work that, that 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 folks might be interested in hearing more sure. about. Sure, absolutely. I think, yeah, the, you, we've seen. A, I think, a, I guess, I would say two trends that jump out to me in particular when it comes to school counseling. One is moving to a more, um, what you might call a more developmental model, which means, you know, not just being in your office waiting mm. for when things don't go right to uh, have a student sure. come down, but to um, try and be in the classroom um, as much as possible mm -hmm. that those, those services that take place in your office are really important too. Um, so, you know, one thing that we've done um, during my time at the high school is to try and get into the classroom a little bit more and be a little bit more proactive. So, for example, we'll do 
a series of uh, seminars about the mid-year each year with juniors. And we talk about course selection, but we also start talking about sort of post-secondary planning. Um, we do the same thing with seniors, but right at the beginning of the year, and we're really, for the most part, talking about the college application process for them. Um, we get in with freshmen um, within the first couple of months of school to do an introduction. Um, and, you know, it kind of just, you know, ways to succeed at high school mm -hmm. type lesson. Um, and sophomores, we try and do one based on um, sort of career planning, get them start thinking about what they want to do after high school. So we're, we're doing more and more of that. As, as you know, we've, mm -hmm. we have a program. Um, we have a lot of night programming, too, um, for parents. We do a college fair each year and um, starting about Three or four years ago, we started our common application boot camp mm -hmm. in the boot summer. Camp, right, so, right. you know, really trying Could you to talk a little bit more about that because I, yeah. I think that was a fantastic idea. Yeah, but I know it was something you had had worked on previously to try you know to develop for its full implementation. Yeah. And you say this, it's been three summers now? That I think it's been three, yeah. yeah. Could, you, could you talk a little bit about that? Absolutely, and it, it really, it's, it did start some, uh, I know some other schools uh, were doing it, and, and um, I know some kids that approached you kind of interested in something, and it was really neat to sort of sit with the kids and say, yeah. what do you think would be helpful? What right. do you need? And we did that, and, and since then, I think we've run a nice program. So we do it over two days in August, and we invite any, um, what we'd call rising senior um, mm -hmm. to, to come if they would like. And um, they register and, and they come. And the very first thing we do with them is, is we sit in our distance learning lab and we really s go through from start to you know end a common application with them. And they leave there probably with it about 90, 95% down. There's always a couple of things you have this to wait a little longer. This is the common application that colleges mm -hmm. and universities use for the, yeah. the, as their application, better yeah. application. Yeah, process. I believe they're up to over 700 colleges and yeah. universities, something that another trend that yeah. has changed from a couple, maybe 100 schools to over 700 at this point. Yeah, so... Um, and how many students do you guess yeah. participate? Yeah, we that? usually, I would say we've had anywhere from about 60 to 100 students, depending on the year. So as high as maybe 50% of the class. Yeah, I yeah. would say so, yeah. right. Yeah. Um, and it has to be run in August. There's a, there's a reason why it has to run when it does, right? Yeah, August 1st is the day the right. common application becomes available. So we're typically that second week of August, we send out to the students some information they may want to gather to be prepared and get as much of it uh, done as they can. Once we've completed that, um, we rotate the students through. About half of the students will go and meet with um, our two of our English teachers and do an hour on the college essay, you know brainstorming and getting the rap process started, which is really neat. Um, and we've had some teachers dedicate to that, and they've been fantastic. Um, the other students will rotate what we, through what we call mini seminars. And for example, last year we had uh, two college reps, one from Syracuse, one from mm -hmm. St. Anselm's, come in and talk about the admissions process from their perspective. They might, uh, the other section of students might be with me. I do one usually on, um, staying organized during the college application process and we uh, typically offer one on like the college interview so there's some different other sort of mini seminars they rotate through um, on day two they come back in they spend a second hour with um, an english teacher again talking about that essay mm -hmm. um, some students will even start it in between the two sessions yeah. um, are these consecutive days yeah we would typically actually other years we have um, We've even left a day in between, but uh, based on some feedback we got, we're going to go consecutive days this year. I think students feel like they don't necessarily have to have that day in okay. between. Um, and then uh, we offer a couple. Again, they rotate through some different seminars. We usually have they have one elective that they pick that they can go to mm -hmm. that we offer too. So it's just been a really good day. How many hours, Mike? So it's about, I would say they get about a total of... Uh, somewhere about six, a little over six hours of sort of what I'll call direct instruction yep. in this yep. case. Um, the main thing, and the, when the kids brought it to us, they really said, we're looking to have it help relieve stress in the fall. In the sure. fall, we get back to school, our classes start again. It's fabulous. We get to, you know, yeah, athletics start, the musical yeah, comes right, soon. Right. Um, so that's been our main intent. Yeah. We tell the students. Fee. 
Yeah, there is a small fee reasonable. for it, but I think that's kind of it's worked been out. Around $60 uh, yeah, I think right? forty to fifty. Yeah, yeah, yeah usually. So, so um, we try and keep that as yeah. as, as reasonable as possible. Um, yeah. So it's been you know that's been a really exciting program. That, that is that is a, it's a yeah. great idea, and I know it's been very successful. And it's yeah. nice to hear that you know it's it, I, I can only imagine it's going to just continue. Yeah, right? yeah. As I, the common applications use right expands. Yeah. You know why wouldn't in, why wouldn't more students participate? Absolutely, and in one of the I think the other other sort of cause uh, for a program like that is that um, you know the college one of the trends again another trend that we've seen is just the college application process becomes so much earlier yeah. than it used to I mean it's a huge thing when I first um, got into guidance I distinctly remember my first year having two students submit applications by November 1st now we're probably well over 50% of our class will submit an application by one mm. of the November 1st, like sort of early action deadline. Yeah. So it, the whole process has shifted months, if not would more. You, would you be able to give a guess or, mm -hmm. or maybe you have a more concrete number, but yeah. what, what do you think the average student is submitting for applications? It's a really good question. Another number that's gone up in, in particular. It, it um, seems to me that it has gone up. Oh, just yes, from yeah. the, you know, where I sit now as the mm -hmm. superintendent, but different than when I was the principal. But sure. It seems like it's it's more, right? When I talk yep. to students, I hear where they're applying, and I think to myself sometimes, yeah. that's a long list. That's a long <laughs> list, and it's not always cheap. Yeah. Um, no. But I would say in it, part of it is the common application. They've made it easier for students to apply. So um, uh, once you yeah. kind of get that main part done, it's easy to sure. submit it to several places. Of course, again, the cost can come into play at times. Um, but our students, um, I want to say, and, and I do have the, uh, the I do, we do figure the number each year. It's somewhere between six and eight colleges mm -hmm. on average. And as you know, average can be a funny number right. because we do have students that focus on one or two schools. Maybe they're being recruited as an athlete. Right. So they don't have as many, but we certainly have students that apply yeah. to many more than that yeah. too. So, yeah. um, but yeah, yeah. impressive list this year. I mean, we always our, our students do well. They do well. They traditionally yeah. have done yeah. well. But it, it, again, as I talk to either you or other yeah. counselors or the students themselves, some of the schools that this year seem to be to be. Um, you know, not schools that we typically have had students even apply to, to, let alone be accepted yeah. to. Middlebury yeah. College. For yeah, example, yeah, that's a that was a that's you know, a great yeah. school. And um, yeah, we've had some you know what I'll call somewhat unique acceptances this year. May first is right around the yeah. corner, so we're right, really excited right. to see where um, that's the day students have to. Uh, submit their deposit by yeah, so yeah. I think we have some decisions coming down to the wire here but actually in about two weeks we're gonna we go in with the students and do a survey to learn more about right, where right, they're uh, right. where they're gonna go so mm, we'll see how yeah. everything shakes out in the end that's great yeah, yeah so. the, the boot camp has been yeah, it's been, been nice. really yeah, exciting. Been to, yeah. You mentioned Naviance, which is a program, yeah. as you know, I'm always excited and, and proud of um, something that I had actually used in my previous district, and um, it was very new at the time, and we brought it to uh, North Reading with your support, and um, that program's grown a ton, but it's really, it's you know. Been maybe, what? Seven or eight years? Is Actually, believe it or not, and it, 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 we we brought it in in two thousand five. So Did I we think really? yeah, and it was a very at that time one of the reasons I think. You know, it was a really a behind the scenes type program that counselors could use to look at admissions and we were really right, building it. That, and yeah. then uh, after that, it, there became what I'll call an outward looking mm -hmm. um, module where students and parents uh, can log in and, and look at admissions data. Um, and that's just one thing they can really right, do with right. it. There's a lot of career in college and academic planning tools in it. Um, and then it really acts as, you know, it acts as the, um, uh, the way that uh, we as the guidance counselors and teachers can submit uh, doc, uh, documents electronically yep. to colleges. So students are on it a lot in their senior year facilitating that right, process. Right. So it's, it's, it's a robust and, program. And I'm remembering that there, were, there was a series of years where you were rolling out a new feature each year, it yeah. seemed, you know, and then it, and then, mm -hmm. it, and then it started to morph down yep. from seniors only to, to a, or a junior to sophomore, and there were things mm -hmm. that students could be doing, students and parents, I guess, could be doing earlier and earlier. Yeah, and, yeah. yep. We uh, we encourage when we meet with mm -hmm. the freshmen, usually by December of their freshman year, we have one of those seminars I talked about. They usually create their account right then and there, um, and then we use it for career planning with sophomores, and um, again, really get back into the college. Mm -hmm. uh, sections of it with uh, with juniors and seniors so it's, it's really you great. mentioned about the seminars I think mm. just by by way of uh, you know just to, to again to inform people 
I think it's interesting. It would be interesting for people to know how you how you schedule those and, and mm -hmm. where where and when you're doing them. And mm. I mean, the, 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 I think the smallness of them as a small yeah. is, has a benefit. Could you just talk a little bit about how sure how it is that you are able as four there's four guidance counselors how yeah. you're able to 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 meet with a class of students at mm -hmm. say roughly 180 to 200. Right, students. right. How yeah. Do you, how do you maneuver all that? <laughs> Not a lot of moving yeah, parts yeah. to it, but um, we we have a good uh, working relationship with the teachers and. And um, <clears throat> to not take time away from, you know, only one subject area, we, uh, we usually work across different subjects. So when we're meeting with freshmen, we're usually doing that through their freshman seminar class, which makes sense. We think, you know, mm -hmm. it's part of that class is to so help. So you're, you're scheduling across that course mm -hmm. for the grade and mm -hmm. meeting with maybe 20 to yeah. 24 students or yep. something at a time. A typical yep. class, yeah. So, um, you know, we'll come in and for the freshmen, one, all the guidance, all four of us will come in and speak with the students because we really want them to see our faces sure, and know who we are. are. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, sophomores, we've traditionally used um, PE and health, and again, like you said, schedule with each of the classes. So maybe in that case, we'll have eight different seminars with maybe 20 students, right. 25 right. students. Um, and then um, when the students are juniors, we work with our World History Two teachers because we know every junior has World History mm -hmm. Two. Um, so sometimes we have to look at those, especially in the upper grades, make sure right. that it's a homogeneous grouping yes, of uh, yes, students. Yes. So um, <laughs> and then senior year, we use our government class uh, because all of our Again, students everybody. take yeah mm -hmm. some form of government. So that works out really well. And um, depending on the you know there might be two guidance counselors or like I said with with um, the freshmen, we all four of us may be in there because we're really getting sure. to know them. I want to say too, the um, one of the other things I've really enjoyed is getting, with, when I get to go to like the elementary schools, uh, a lot of times I've seen the um, school psychologists in each of our elementary schools carry out one of these sort of seminars or what we would call like a developmental lesson. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's been really exciting for me because I hadn't been in that level of school for mm -hmm. a while mm -hmm. and watching them, you know, um, teach a lesson on empathy where they get to use, you know, a book that's sort of grade level yeah, appropriate yeah. to uh, to teach a lesson and just to mm. see the enthusiasm of those students, yeah. you know, kind of raising their hand and sometimes shouting out answers, sure, but it's sure. really neat to see that energy and uh, and see, watch them learning things that maybe we as adults take for granted, like recognizing other people's emotions mm -hmm. and stuff. Mm -hmm. But you really see it clicking with them. So that, that's an excellent segue. Yeah, oh, to perfect. Where, to yeah. where I want to go <laughs> okay, next. Okay, yeah. we and we didn't even plan. No. <laughs> um, but but it, a lot of what we've been talking about up to this point has been about the college focus mm -hmm. in, in in high school, and it's true that um, you know we're we're a school district where the vast majority of our students mm -hmm. go on to some sort of post-secondary education, but that's, that, that is not the case for every student. Right. Nor is it the only thing that your, you and your colleagues are doing mm -hmm. in your department at, at, at the guidance office. A couple of years ago, I think this is year three, am I right, that you're in your role as a coordinator yeah. for school counseling mm -hmm. services? Mm -hmm. So that's a, um, for, for the community, it's uh, the coordinator of school counseling services that Mike now holds um, um, as, his, as his position. Um, is a district-wide position. It's an administrative-level position mm -hmm. um, that that brings with it, uh, you know, a longer work year, a <laughs> yeah. longer work day, but also um, an ability to to um, to support people at those at the five schools mm -hmm. in a variety of areas. And one of which I think that um, I'd like to get into a little bit with you now is um, the, the 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 counseling role. Mm -hmm. And I, I know many times over our years working together, you have said to me about that's that's your passion. Yeah. It's the counseling, you know, mm -hmm. the career planning, the college and career planning, of course. Mm -hmm. But often the counseling goes hand in hand with that. Absolutely. And it's, it's it, and it's a. I think I would get, I would suggest it's it's a it's a variety of forms of counseling too. Yes. It's, it's counseling in that you're you may be guiding students on choices, but at the same time. It can be a stressful time. Mm -hmm. Children of all ages, elementary, middle, and high mm -hmm. school, experience stress or, or other or other uh, areas where they might um, they might need um, the support of a counselor. Mm -hmm. Is there is there something in particular you might want to, to talk about in, in in both that that kind of crosses your new role, mm -hmm. but also you know probably it's probably been an expanded role really. It's yeah. not something all that new to you. But mm -hmm. can you talk a little bit about the what, what types of counseling services and such and, and, and things that you sure. might be working with students and probably their families too, I would yeah. guess, in some cases. No, absolutely. And, um, you know, 
even in our district, as you mentioned, you know, the, how the staffing has, has grown in the mm -hmm. area of counseling. I think we've seen this shift from, um, you know, guidance counselors who uh, service students in terms of doing, you know, academic advisement and right. secondary planning, but also sort of what I'll call uh, social emotional type um, counseling. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, as, as we all know, there's just a, an ever expanding need yes. for that. I think partly because we as a society are just much better at recognizing mm -hmm. um, issues and, mm -hmm. um, you know, trying to help students with them. Um, so, you know, I, I think in maybe we've, we're sort of a mirror of this is that, you know, we, we've expanded our staff because I've seen a little bit of like, I don't want to call it specialization, but that's maybe that's the right word in terms of like, you know, guidance counselors couldn't do all of that anymore. Um, all by them, you know, they, we still do do all of that, but we can't, you know, service all of the students all of the sure. time type of thing. So, um, you know, school, we've had school psychologists in the district and certainly at our elementary school and at our middle school, um, you know, they've always done sort of an, you know, a really excellent job, but they have different parts of, you know, the, their responsibilities to, mm -hmm. uh, to focus on. So, um, you know, we've, uh, we added a school adjustment counselor, say, about five years ago, which is definitely a role in schools that I've seen expand over my yes. um, time, is um, if you ask me my first couple of years what a school adjustment guy, I said, oh, I've met one, <laughs> you know, I've, I've heard yeah. of that, but um, now we've seen schools um, adding there, and, and their ability um, is to really focus on that social emotional component for the most part. So, um, you know, where we're pulled away for post-secondary planning and academic advising, and we'll still help with social emotional, but we have people that, mm -hmm. you know, can really focus on that for, for students who, who need that assistance. And our school psychologists, while they have, um, they evaluate students, and in, in that's a big part of their job, they're uh, really well trained, um, especially now that there's a, you know, increased focus on working one-on-one -on -one with students students are in small groups on mm -hmm. social emotional mm -hmm. issues so I always look at it as that's sort of our first you know yeah. if, if the students you know can't um, if they're having some sort of uh, social or emotional issue it's awful hard for them to focus on their learning so mm -hmm. we've always got to um, you know try to work with them on that so they're getting the most out of their education. Sure. Hmm. Have you what, what has has anything in your new role um, surprised you? I know you, you were mostly a high school person in your yeah. career. But yeah. Okay. I think in, I, not necessarily surprised, but like I mentioned, it's just been really fun to go into the schools yeah. at the lower level and see how dedicated and passionate our counselors yeah. are at that level. Yeah. And, and they are, they're juggling a lot of uh, balls, but they, um, you know, I, I, like I said, I've gone to see them go into the classroom and, and do lessons on a wide variety mm -hmm. of, of topics and um, really creative stuff too. Like I said, using um, books that teach a certain lesson, using videos, and it, um, it's just been really sort of neat yeah. to see that. And I guess a, you know, a surprise is just how like enthusiastic and receptive the students are to it. Mm. Uh, I wasn't sure what yeah, like a younger yeah. kid's reaction, but they they seem to be really enthusiastic. Nice. And when they get it, you you yeah. just see them sort of oh, understand electric. it all yeah. of a sudden. Right, it's right. so great. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's funny so. that that would be a couple of years ago. I think, or maybe it was even last school year. I in one of my newsletters, my my cover letter to it, um, I acknowledged that one of the the, the things that I had been um, uh, most pleased about in my mm -hmm. role as a superintendent, prior to being a superintendent, my whole career had been at the high school, high school sure. was getting into um, the lower uh, grade schools, yeah. elementary and middle school, but particularly in the elementary school, that was just never part of my work. Right. You know, you, you sort of, you, you, you saw the transitions mm -hmm. from middle to high school, and when I was a teacher, I taught mostly ninth grade at the high school okay. level, so you, I had some exposure there, but the elementary school was really something very yeah. different for me, and I have to say, uh, it, it really, uh, I would agree with you, it's like the, the energy, mm -hmm. the excitement, the enthusiasm, and, and just the, um, the nature of students being sponges, and just they yeah. just want to take it all in. They yeah. want to suck everything up that yeah. you're telling them, and, and you can't feed them enough. It's great, yeah. you know. And there is there is something special about the people doing the work there too. Right. I mean, it's, it's, oh, it's yeah. yeah it's, I mean, boy, they really they're setting those kids on a course for yeah. their 
you know, really for the rest of their life, but certainly I know. their school life. You I know, often right? tease them and say, you, you get them ready for us, yeah, even though really, they might be, right. but it's it true. Is, even it They might be 10 true. years it out, really but I said, is. you guys are doing a good job. It'll make our job yeah. easy when they get That's there. That's good to hear. As, good. Um, as he, I have a, a daughter in elementary school and a son yeah. in middle school. Yeah. And it's funny because I'll often share with them when I go home what, what experience um, I had if I was at a middle sure. school thing that day or something. And sometimes... They're doing stuff very similar oh, to what yeah? I see, that's and it's great. just funny. Yeah, They're like, how do you know what we're doing? <laughs> I know. I that. <laughs> yeah. That's <laughs> so right. It's nice. <laughs> so that, I asked you a little bit about something that may have surprised you. Now mm -hmm. I'm going to ask you um, to think about if, if you, and you have a lot going on, so I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to hold you to anything right now. <laughs> Thank but you. But I'm, I'm, I'm just going to ask you, if there, is there something out there that, like, what's next for um, school counseling services in our district? If you had a, yeah. you know, kind of a, Blank check and a and a, and a, and a, and a magic wand. What would, what would that? Is there something that well, I really like that kind of question? A burning issue that you'd love to see happen? Yeah, I think it would be, um, you know, a, a general expansion of, of what we're able to offer students. And like I said, I mean, I like to do, you know, a little bit of everything. So in some ways, it's it's you know, uh, guidance can be the perfect job because one minute I may be helping a student with college applications and the next minute I may be, uh, you know, with a student that was upset for some reason. Um, but I think just in, uh, able to expand um, the services we're able to offer sort of in every area, the academic, mm -hmm. the post-secondary planning and career planning and um, sort of the social emotional area so um, I would you know love to be able to see our staff and so whether it's our guidance counselors our school psychologist our um, school adjustment counselor continue to be able to get into classrooms and uh, and or work with small groups in, in what I'm going to call more preventative or developmental mm -hmm. um, type programs um, and, and really just be able to, you know, uh, keep expanding that so yeah. that students, you know, uh, feel good in terms of, uh, you know, the social emotional parts of their lives so that they uh, feel like they're, they're prepared if they're, you know, choices to go off to college. Um, as always, I always say I'd love to do more and more with career things to help the students assess, you know, their, their strengths and their skills and be able to decide on what they want to do before they leave Based high school. On, yeah. So some sort of an assessment that mm -hmm. identifies for them areas of strength where a particular mm -hmm. career or yeah. might be a good path so, for them to pursue. Yeah, and Naviance has several yeah. of those. And we, yeah. we do try and get in with the sophomores and have them mm -hmm. do one, but I would love to continue to do that. Yes. Um, I just think, you know, I always, I tell the students, but when you're between the ages of 14 and 18, you don't necessarily need to know what you want to do for the rest of your life, but let's think about it and yeah. let's, let's, let's research some different uh, opportunities because ultimately, um, you know, I think sometimes if it's, I always say on a Tuesday night in February, sophomore year, when you have to do your geometry <laughs> homework, sometimes, you know, you, you know, it's a little exactly. hard to do, but it's that, <laughs> you know, why am I doing this? And yeah. to be able to continually connect that yeah. to, yeah. you know, the future. Sure. What are you most proud of in your work? Oh, geez. <laughs> um, I'm just, I'm, I'm very proud of the, um, you know, what we've been able to sort of put together and, in, 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 you know, the, what we're able to offer students. Um, but I don't know if this is related, but I'm thinking about what, like, what gets me going, you know, up and going sure. to work every day. Yeah. And it is, yeah. it is honestly, it's those interactions with kids and being able Absolutely. to create a rapport with, with the students. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, there's kind of no better moment than, you know, having a student be really appreciative of something you were able to kind of help them with yeah. or to figure out, or, um, it's just a really yeah. kind of neat moment. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, well, I and I know how many students when they have graduated and gone on mm -hmm. come back and either visit you, Commute, somehow uh, communicate so, with you. Yeah, you know, those things are those are special. Oh, they say yeah. yeah. You need it yeah. some days, right? Because it's a, a, you know the work isn't always easy. Yeah, and, no, um, it's not. And to uh, to get that and to realize that maybe whether mm -hmm. it, even if it's something tiny, been able to help in some way is just and some, very rewarding. Sometimes you don't even realize that what you did had the impact that it did. Absolutely. I bet, right? Oh yeah, yeah. The, I've you been know, surprised a few times in my yeah, life. Yeah, yeah. 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 it's great. Yeah, that's the best part. I've said it to people, Mike, and I'm going to say it to you now. Uh, 
you know, I've worked in education a long time. You're one of the most talented people I've ever oh, worked with. Thank you. I you appreciate You truly that. have the gift. You do. No, and to think you. now that, that your lot. abilities have, have, have um, transcended elementary schools <laughs> and our middle school in North Reading yeah. is, I think, something that I'm particularly proud of because you, you, you truly do have the gift of an educator, and I think uh, your talents will will uh, will be felt for a long time in North Reading, and that's that's something you should be very proud of. I, I, I'm very proud that of. That means so. a lot to me. I appreciate it. No, thank you. And I appreciate you taking time out of your day today to, yeah. to, to be on the show, and um, I'm hoping that what you shared with the community, I have no doubt, has, has given a little bit more insight into the work that you're doing with your colleagues to... Um, to really support our students and and to, to help them be the best people they can and to realize their dreams and you yeah. really do do that I mean, when, you know, it's exciting and so yeah. so good for you and thank you now thank you thank you all for watching thank you